Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 4, Part 2. Welcome to Part 2. In this part, we're going to learn about activation functions. Activation functions are mathematical equations that can be used to scale the output from a neuron layer. Activation functions are used to make sure that the numbers are in a desirable range. We will look at three different activation functions in this class session. We will look at the linear layer, which is really just a simple activation function that does nothing. It's simply, it simply it does not scale the output at all. This is rarely used. It's mostly a theoretical activation function type. We will also look at the sigmoidal and the uh, hyperbolic tangent functions as activation functions. We will begin by looking at the, the graph of each of these and the actual equation. We begin by examining the linear activation function. Here you see the most simple of activation functions, the linear function. Notice it simply returns the same value that it was passed. It is really no activation function at all. Because of this, it's mostly theoretical. Usually you will want to use a real activation function. However, if you want to test the neural network in such a way so that no activation function is modifying the outputs of the neurons, the linear function works just fine for that. The linear function cannot be used for backpropagation. This is because the linear function has no useful derivative. You must use calculus to determine the derivative of a activation function in order to use it with backpropagation. We'll discuss this more when we study backpropagation later in this class session. But for now, simply be aware that you cannot use the linear activation function with backpropagation training. And here you see the graph of the linear activation function. It is typical of the sort of graph that you would expect from the most simple sort of linear function. You can see that it does pass through both negative and positive values. This is an important distinction. Some of the other activation functions that we will look at will only pass through positive values. This means that that sort of uh, activation function cannot be used when you are only ex when you're expecting both positive and negative numbers. That's one of the chief considerations that you must be aware of when you're choosing an activation function is does it support the entire range of numbers that you need. The linear function that you see here, as I said before, will only be used for testing purposes. You specify the activation function when you set up a layer in the neural network. Next we will see the sigmoid activation function. The formula for the sigmoidal activation function is shown here. The sigmoid activation function gets its name from the shape of its graph. The graph has the same shape as the sigmoid. We will see more about this when we look at the graph for this equation in just a moment. The sigmoid activation function is the default activation function for the feedforward neural layer that we saw in the previous part when we were looking at the XOR example. It is important to understand that if you do not specify any sort of other activation function for a neural layer, at least when using the classes in this book, you will be using the sigmoidal activation function. This is important because the sigmoid has several limitations. And here you see a graph of the sigmoid activation function. The sigmoid function is sigmoidal in shape. Sigmoid refers to something which is S-shaped. This term is used in other branches of science to describe things. For example, the sigmoid colon is the part of the colon in the human body that has a somewhat S-shape to it. Looking at this graph, you will see another very important thing about the sigmoid function. You will notice that over the y value, the sigmoid function does not venture into negative values. Because of this, the sigmoid function is not at all a suitable choice for 
when you expect output that may be in the negative range. Later, when we write predictive neural networks where we want to predict if something goes up or down, like a stock price, we need negative numbers because, unfortunately, stocks do go down. Here you see the equation for the hyperbolic tangent function. The hyperbolic tangent function comes from trigonometry. It is used to describe certain properties of angles. However, it also makes a very good activation function for neural networks. It is not the default choice, as we just described. The default is actually a sigmoid activation function. So if you want to use this activation function, you will need to use a special form of the neural layer that accepts a activation function as one of the parameters. The hyperbolic tangent function is very useful because the numbers returned from it pass through both the negative and positive range of the number system. This means that the hyperbolic tangent function can be used when you expect positive and negative output. Here you see the graph for the hyperbolic tangent function. Looking at the graph, you see that it crosses through both positive and negative numbers in the y range. It also illustrates why we use activation functions. Notice how the, as the values get larger in the x range that the line flattens. This causes it to average out extremes in the numbers and make them more flattened, which causes the neural network to be able to recognize them more easily. This function can also be used with backpropagation because it does have a valid um, derivative that can be used with it. The same thing is true of the sigmoidal function. It also has a valid derivative for backpropagation. In this part, we use terms such as derivative and looked at a number of equations that give this a very mathematical sort of a look. If you're not familiar with this sort of mathematics, you do not need to worry. You can simply let these equations work under the hood and continue onward. Just remember that you use the sigmoidal activation function if you're only expecting positive values and you use the hyperbolic tangent activation function if you're expecting positive and negative values. For this introductory course, this is sufficient to get you through. It is really not always necessary to know exactly what is going on beneath the covers as the neural network functions do their thing. This is particularly true if you're using a neural network API such as the NCOG framework. This concludes part two. In the next part, we're going to learn about hidden layers, and in particular, how many hidden layers you should have and the number of neurons in each of these. We hope you will continue on with part three. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java, and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.